Let's face it, there are good kinds of yeast and bad kinds of yeast. But bad yeast goes scat with yeastostat. Burns an itch or a thing of the past. And Yeastostat's seven easy step application makes feeling fresh a breeze. I like yeast in my bagel, but not in my muffin. Did you hear the news? Let's have a chat. That yeast goes down with yeast that's And free. I dig your name. So do you think that your parents like knew that you were gonna grow up to be a lesbian, giving you a boy name? I'm not a lesbian. Oh, uh, you just wear so much eyeliner. Yes! Bravo! I would not be embarrassed to share the stage with you. Thank you. You just rocked it so hard. Thanks. Thank you for your time, Star Child, but it's not a fit. Are you insane? I'm sorry, would you mind just stepping outside for a moment while I bitch slap some sense into my friend? You have no right to take down that memorial. Oh, as a matter of fact, I do, Sandbag. I allowed that memorial to remain in the hallway for over a week. Oh, please. You wanted that memorial gone because you're such a cold-hearted bitch. What did you just call me? A miserable, self-centered bitch who has spent every waking minute of the past three years trying to make our lives miserable. I'm officially over it. I don't care for your attitude. Well, I don't give a hot, wet monkey's ass what you care for. But now I have to book myself a hotel. In New York City during the holidays? Are you crazy? Do you know how expensive that'll be? Calm down, Joyce DeWitt, okay? It's gonna be fine. Don't you remember that money that my mom gave me for graduation? Your college fund? Mm -hmm. Please tell me you didn't spend it all on post-breakup gifts for yourself. No, no, just half. Okay, no, come on. You are not playing the end of the lesbian so matchmaker. Hi, no, you're I have not. To get I've been here all day. Bye, Rachel. We'll see you tomorrow. Goodbye, Dan. I think I need an agent. I guess those contracts I signed for those commercials said that I waived my right to residuals in exchange for a lifetime supply of yeast to stash. Though I don't know whose toxic vagina would need that much of that stuff. I mean, if you're producing that much yeast, you should probably start a bakery. <sighs> You can't handle it. You can't handle that. I have made it, and you are just begging to be my understudy. Okay, you know what? Just admit that even with all of your years of singing lessons and dancing lessons and only child adoration from your gay Broadway dads, that I am just as good as you. Unlike you, I can be popular in high school and still make it big after graduation. Just admit that no matter what you do or how far you go, you will never be able to scratch that itch. You will never be able to look down on me and redeem yourself because I was better than you then and I'm always gonna be better than you. You are short, you are awful, and that is never gonna change. <laughs> I think you should move out. I agree. Okay, I know that Finn had his doubts about God, but I am convinced that Squishy Teats is up in heaven right now, plopped down next to his new best friend, Fat Elvis, helping themselves to a picnic of baby back ribs smothered in butterscotch pudding and tater tot grease. Well, Merry Christmas, Lady Hummel. Now you can relive all of your Jeffrey Dahmer fantasies in the privacy of your own home. <laughs> but that's not it, because additionally, I am giving you an all expense paid what? trip to Dildo Island. It's a real place, it's in Canada. I got you the deluxe bachelor package. I take this. Gunther, that's my yeast system. What the hell? And I am seriously sensing some workplace sexism happening over here. All these little lady elves are dressed like candy striped hookers. Do you think they'll let me keep this when we're done? Because I am loving this look on me, Lord of the Bling. Rachel, it's No, I can't, it. I can't, I can't do it, Kurt. You're gonna have to read it. No way, I'm too nervous. You know what, give me this. I don't mind being the bearer of that news. I hear, try this, I added some nutmeg. No, I think that needs some kick. I mean, come on, Kurt, don't all you gays love Julia Child? Didn't she like spike everything? I have hated you ever since the day I met you. You are a horrible person who never had a nice word to say about Finn Hudson. So don't you dare think for a second that he didn't hate you too. If I were you, I would choose my next few words very carefully. What are you gonna do? You're gonna expel me? You get the hell out of my office. How about you make me get the hell out of your office? Donna, call the police. Donna, you pick up that phone and I swear to God, I will shove my foot so That's far up. Assault. No, this is assault. What? Where are you? I'm taking a much needed break, okay? It is exhausting playing a slutty elf. Get back here! Hey, Santa passed out in his own vomit and probably crapped his pants. And until the mall can find a replacement, we need you to come back and play Mrs. Claus. No, no, you play Mrs. Claus, Lady Hummel. You were born to play Mrs. Claus and Mrs. Butterworth and B. Arthur and Barbara Bush. 
You know, what I will tell you is that I think you've actually become more of a Grandma Moses since moving to New York. I mean, you just had a traumatic breakup with Princess Valiant, and you're single, you should be living it up. Oh, oh my God! God. That is oh, not happening! Oh, don't worry, ladies. Santa swings both ways. What? What's the matter, Santana? Jealous? No, <laughs> I am disgusted, and also... Yeah. Impressed. Who knew the Queen of England could be so trashy? So here she is, Mrs. Claus! <laughs> Merry Christmas! Yeah. Who's ready to sit on my lap? I just have this weird guilt trip thing about being friends with you because I was so awful to you in high school. Quinn and Britt hated you too, and that's mostly just because you sucked so bad and you walked with that weird feet pointing out thing. I made Quinn look like the boss, but I was really running the hate on Rachel Parade. Way back in the old days when I started the Glee Club, I would give an assignment and then I would, I would give a little demonstration of what I was looking for. Yeah. Yeah. See, you all cheer now, but just wait till he starts rapping. What are you doing? Putting makeup on. I have some bruising on my cheek I'd like to cover up before rehearsal. You may not know this because you haven't been interested in Broadway since the day we met, but the star gets her own vanity. There is a perfectly fine bathroom mirror upstairs for the understudy. I'm so sorry. I totally forgot how much room you need for all that hooker makeup you plaster on every day. I will totally slap you again. I would love for things to get physical. I will hit you so hard that you won't be able to wake up until you're old enough to be funny late. You will never play this part. I know you plan on getting all showgirls crazy on me and pushing me down the stairs and poisoning my oatmeal, but you're gonna have to kill me first. And even then, I will come back from the dead and I will play this part just to spite you. Zombie Fanny. Ghost Fanny, actually. And what would you like for Christmas? I want a dot make seven's time for your checkup dog. Mm -hmm. Oh, so cute. so cute. Well, that sounds a little molesty. I mean, I didn't start playing doctor till I was nine. We'll see what I can do. Look at that. Pasty Gay is siding with me. Lady Hummel, come here. I need your tiny, delicate, elfin-like fingers to help me fasten this weave. It's Elliot, actually. And that's a lot of hair. I will take that as a compliment. It's all a part of my master plan to psych out Barry so I can play Fanny Bryce. First comes some amazing hair. Then incredibly sexy rehearsal clothes, which she could never pull off. And then I'm going to sneak into the theater and tack up yearbook photos of her from sophomore year when she was a chunky little butterball. Just a reminder, hey, once a fatty, always a fatty. God is my witness. I will break her down. And apparently, the only song we can sing in a diva off is Defying Gravity. Wait, so we have to listen to Kurt shred that note again? For the millionth time, I did it on purpose. I think that somebody needs to freeze the fat for Christmas because somebody weighs more than Mrs. Claus. Oh, whoa, stop right there. You look a little Jewish, right, Rachel? Mm -hmm. okay. Bye. I'm actually just here to get her sheet music. Do you know where she keeps it? Upper butt. I bet Puckerman. I'm gonna let you finish. But first, I would like to uphold the tradition of hijacking this glee club and making everyone sit through what is basically an intervention. I don't know what happened between the two of you in the past. Honestly, I don't really care. It's all puppy dogs and rainbows from now till this show closes. Well, at least we know who the rainbow is and who's the dog. <laughs> I think he pooped in his pants. I want a kinder college learning laptop. Why don't we just get you an iPad? You can't even get porn on whatever you just asked me for, okay? Hey, how's it going? Ladies, join us for a toast. <laughs> Here's to being naughty this Christmas. Oh, mean naughty. Naughty. Yeah. <laughs> Mm -hmm. If you knew Barry the way that all of us did, you would be applauding me. In the beginning, it's all sunshine and giggles and stickers. And then the second that you want the same thing as her, a dark cloud comes over her whiskery little chin. And she will chew you up and spit you out like a Jewish Hillary Clinton. You look exactly like a young Britney S. Pierce, doesn't she? Britney is my ex-girlfriend, and she just dumped me, which is why I'm even here and why I have this job. And we're lesbians, you know? And, like, I'd never okay. been with Okay, like great. Job. There's no point in trying to broker the peace, Kurt. I am not interested. Neither am I. Although if you can clear out some space for us here, I would be happy to settle this Lima Heights style. Two men enter, one man leaves. Okay, I'm gonna give you both one more chance to put the stupidity aside and act like adults. Okay, my feelings are my feelings, Kurt, and they're not gonna change even if Santana admits that she was wrong. You broke this. I'm gonna break broke something, but you are literally the most selfish bitch I've ever met. You know, I'm just 
moving into my apartment. Whoa, wait, whoa, what did you just say? How could you do this to me? You are such a traitor. Well, A, I hardly know you, so I'm not really being a traitor. And B, she needed a place to stay and I needed the money. You need money? Well, yeah. Huh. Well, maybe Auntie Snicks could help you out with that. Why are you digging through my panty drawer, Leslie? What? what would you like for Christmas? Oh, oh, nope, you know what? I think that you should ask Santa to get your daddy a job with some dental benefits because your grill is freaking jacked up. Do you see? I think that Mrs. Claus needs a break. This is going well, right? Mm, here we go. Hi, Rachel. What's going on here? What's going on here? We have a fatwa against her, remember? Actually, I am paying Elliot to run lines with me, and they are going to be letter perfect by the time you have the tragic accident that sidelines you and leaves you horribly disfigured. Or did that already happen? I can't. Okay, for the millionth time, that is never, ever going to happen. I gave you the apartment, I gave you Kurt, and you are never, let me repeat, ever gonna play this part, ever. Heard some chatter about there was some trouble over here. Us Santas tend to keep pretty close ranks. Okay, listen, even I'll admit that my girl loving vagina's feeling a little jingle bell from you, but uh, we don't need your help. This has nothing to do with the band, Kurt, okay? Santana and I are both professionals. Exactly. Blink-182 hated each other and still found a way to continue to suck as a band for years. Well, Santana, I hope that you can rise above because I wouldn't miss it for the world. Okay, we'll just make sure that you stay on your side of the club, door. I think I saw a squirrel come out of the back of your hair. Go ahead, please. Because if I don't express my venom at least once a day, I get constipated. I'm gonna be rich and famous. And this is a great first step for me. And besides, I'm not gonna let that dwarf berry win. Okay, look, the way I see it is we have two options right now. One, we can have an all out cat fight right here in the middle of this bar. Which I would win. Or, for the sake of Kurt, we could just pretend to be friends even if it's just for tonight. Fine, but just for tonight and only because I don't wanna get your blood all over my outfit. Hey everybody, no more drama. Time to vote for either Rachel or Mercedes. Excuse me, Schuster. Before we cast another pointless vote in a meaningless contest that has absolutely no practical ramifications whatsoever, I would like to say some words about my good friend, Rachel Berry. Rachel Berry is the most horrible human being on the planet. What? Can it troll? Santana. You have sold half the people in this room down the river more times than I can count so that you can get a solo or the lead in a musical. And I'm pretty sure that you don't know the names of the other half of the people. That's not true. All right, what is his name? Rick. Exactly, thank you. You know, it's funny, but I realized that I really don't have any other girlfriends here in New York City and you were sort of my only one. Well, maybe you should take that as a sign of your horrible personality disorder. Can I have a word with you? Oh, um, I'm gonna go. No, you know, Ralph, stay. Kurt, I took what you said to heart and I thought long and hard about it and it occurred to me that you may have a point. Okay, maybe Brittany and I are too young to get married. I mean, after all, that's why it didn't work out with you and Blaine, right? Or maybe it didn't work out because you're a judgmental and a tyrannophile with a mouth like cat's ass. Maybe Blaine got tired of hearing a shrill, self-aggrandizing lecture about how you felt the two of you were at the very apex of the gay rights movement every time you so much as cooked macaroni and cheese together or farted. Well, they better come fast. I mean, I'm sorry, but two people? Shut up, Tina. There's actually four. As per usual, my undeniable sexual magnetism has worked yet again. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Mason and Madison McCarthy. <sighs> You know, I am pretty sure that our fish ancestors crawled out of the ooze and got legs just to be able to scissor. See, you've all met Rachel, okay, but I've, I live with her. Let me tell you what it's like to share a bathroom with this stubby, undergrown little cretin. Someone in that apartment shaves their face and leaves their stubble in the sink, and we all know it ain't Kurt, so do the math. That's. I'd rather do hard with you than easy with somebody else. Wanky. You're the best they could do? Hells yes. Because I am the closer. And in two minutes, you are gonna be out of this bed, ready to fist fight the Taliban and offering to buy me a diamond necklace. No. Rachel and I are extremely excited to kick off this week's lesson with our... our first musical lesson, Jagged Little Tapestry. Oh, look, finally some songs about Rachel's hair extension. <laughs> you remember when we first met? I was in here doing my hair. Are you trying to make peace with me by getting all nostalgic? Because if so, you are forgetting the one thing that you should have learned from all of our magical time together, and it's that I have no heart. Look, since when is becoming a Broadway star your goal in life? 
A star is a star. It doesn't matter where in the sky I shine. Look, we've all lied at the beginning of a relationship. I told Finn that he was the father of my baby. I told Artie I had a stutter. I told everyone I was straight. I once told the guy I had three vaginas, and he was pretty bummed when he found I only had two. I am Seriously? all of my insecurities. I don't Every do I don't one. I don't do pep talks. If you want a pep talk, you should call Mr. Shu or rent the notebook. <laughs> kind of really digging this back to the future for Glee Club, if for no other reason than to mess with Barry and her sad gay. Fully realize that over the years, uh, you and I have had a few minor differences, but weddings are the time to put all those differences aside. That's a steaming load of crap. I can't stand you 90% of the time, but even I know that if you drag your flat little ass out on that stage tonight, you're gonna murder that crap. Maybe Blaine didn't want to be with someone who looks like they just removed their top row of dentures every time they smile, or someone who doesn't dress like an extra out of one of Andy Dick's more elaborate wet dreams. Maybe Blaine grew weary of dating a breathier, more feminine Quinn Fabray. Maybe he finally got freaked out by your strange obsession with old people that causes you to skulk around nursing homes like one of those cats that can smell cancer. Maybe he got tired of watching you drape yourself on every piano you happen past to entertain exactly no one with. Say some song that Judy Garland choked on her tongue in the middle of, or some sassy old Broadway standard made famous by another dead alcoholic crone. Don't be mad at me. Why do you think that it's okay to go behind my back and be friends with someone who would rather see me dead than in love with another woman? You came out to Abuela 10 years ago, okay? Times have changed. It was three years ago, and nothing has changed for her, and it never will. And believe me, it's not just the homos that she has a problem with because it took that bitch 50 years to talk to a black person, and it was her mailman, and then she accused him of stealing her Christmas cards. I know how selfish and self-centered you are, like the time that you wore an exact copy of Emma Pillsbury's dress to her own wedding, and how you perverted the very idea of marriage by marrying yourself. You are incapable of a selfless act, and if you do what you always do and just show up, you will be forcibly removed by the security guards that I have hired. So have fun polishing your trophy suit. How long are you gonna do this for? You gonna lie to him your whole life? That's what Sue said to do. Sue also told us to be honest with you and treat you like we would treat anyone else, so let's just say it. You can't sing, you can't dance, and you weren't in any of those clubs because you're kind of lazy and pretty toxic to be around. You call people stupid bitches and get mad at xylophones. You're not really a catch, but you found this guy who digs you and you dig him too, and finding someone to put up with you is rare, so. I mean all of this in the nicest way. <laughs> but last I heard she was on Facebook posting about her diverticulitis trolling for sympathy. See, it's even more important she's sick. No, Britt, she can't poop and I don't think that's gonna kill her. Tell that to Fat Elvis. <laughs> Let's go humor a bunch of tone deaf losers by acting <sighs> surprised when we walk in this auditorium. Deal. You know what, Britt? You actually might be right. We might actually have the worst luck of all time because I can't marry you if I'm in jail for killing this bitch. Maybe Blaine woke up one day and said, you know what? I don't want to marry a sexless, self-centered baton twirler. Maybe I need someone who knows more than three dance moves. The finger wag, the shoulder shimmy, and the one where you pretend to twirl two invisible rainbow-colored ribbons attached to your hips. So you know what? Maybe that's why it didn't work out. Maybe it has nothing to do with me and Brittany. Maybe it's just that you are utterly, utterly intolerable. Maybe that has something to do with it.